Hey guys, it's uh, Mr. D here. So today we're going to be looking at uh, section 1.3. All right, we're going to be actually looking into solving linear equations, uh, one and two step equations. All right, so that's today's objective. We're trying to solve one step linear equations using inverse operations, and maybe we'll even get to some two step equations. All right, so just before we jump into actually solving some of these equations, let's go ahead and define a few things here. All right, so the first thing we have to define is an inverse operation. So what is an inverse operation? Okay, all an inverse operation is, is an opposite operation. Okay, so we're going to be talking a little bit about what that means to be an opposite operation, all right? And now when we're actually solving equations, we have to actually use the inverse operations to isolate a variable. All right, so we have to use the inverse operations to isolate a variable. So just with your definition of inverse operations and how that's an opposite operation, let's see if we can figure out a few of the opposite operations of a few of the lists that we have here. So first one we have is addition. The inverse operation or the opposite operation would be subtraction. All right, well, just, we just talked about addition and subtraction being opposite, so the opposite of subtraction would be addition. Okay, next thing, multiplication. Well, opposite of multiplication is division, and opposite of division would be multiplication. Oops. multiplication. All right, so we now know what these inverse operations are according to the ones that we're used to. We're used to seeing addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and we now know what their uh, designated inverse operations are. So now here off to the right we see inverse order of operations. Now when you see order of operations, you should automatically start to think of PEMDAS. Hopefully you guys still remember PEMDAS, right? Parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction. So now remember what we said earlier. We said that inverse is opposite. Well, same thing applies here. The inverse order of operations is actually the reverse process, which would be sad. Method, all right, so we're using sad math. This is what we need when we are solving equations. We need to follow the steps of inverse operations in order to solve equations and solve for a particular variable. All right, so now that we know that, let's actually apply what we just learned and see if we can identify some of the operations demonstrated in the next equations. All right, so. First one we have negative two equals x plus eight. Remember, the whole goal here is to get the x by itself. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So we have a plus eight. So the operation we're doing there is addition. So as we said earlier, the inverse of addition would now be subtraction. All right. Good, let's keep going. Next one, number two, m minus six equals negative 13. Again, we try to get that m by itself. So the operation that we have so far is subtraction. But if our goal is to, whoops, eliminate that subtraction, we have to use addition, the inverse operation of subtraction. All right, good, so let's keep going. Same thing here, we have n divided by four, so our operation is division. 
And as we know, opposite of division or the inverse of division is now multiplication. All right, awesome. So right now, all we did was just identify the operation that we had and identified their inverse operation, okay? Now we're gonna go a little bit further into it and we're actually gonna solve some of these equations, all right? So number four through 12 say, solve the following equations and round to the nearest hundredth or second decimal when necessary. All right, so let's go ahead and get started right away. So we have negative seven plus x equals negative six. All right, well, right off the bat, we see this plus sign here, okay? We know the inverse operation of a plus is minus, okay? However, notice this number in front of that plus is a negative seven, which actually means we have to do the opposite of this negative seven. So what is the opposite of adding, I'm sorry, of subtracting seven? We have to add seven to both sides. All right, so we actually have these two cross out. What are you left with? You're left with a x equals negative six plus seven, which in this case is one. Okay, that is our final answer. All right, if that one seemed a little confusing, that's okay, let's keep going. We'll make sure we understand this as we keep going. All right, so the next one, number five says, negative eight x equals four. All right, well, right off the bat, we see it's negative eight times x. Remember, if there's ever a number and a variable next to each other, that means there's a multiplication going on there. And now if we use inverse operations, we know we have to divide by negative eight. All right, so once again, my negative eights cross out here. All I'm left with is my x. Now four divided by a negative eight, well, we just get a negative one half. Remember, four and negative eight have a four in common, so four divided by four is a one, and negative eight divided by four is a negative two. All right. Let's keep going. Next one, 10 equals W plus, I'm sorry, W divided by four, all right? Inverse operation of dividing by four is multiplying by four. So we're gonna do the same thing to both sides. So here we get four times 10, that's 40. And then these just cross out. That's the whole point. We wanted that. We wanted to get rid of the, that four in the denominator in order to get the W by itself. So my final answer is 40 equals W. Okay, let's continue. So next one, X plus 12 equals negative 10. Right away we see that plus here. So we wanna do the opposite of adding a 12. So we're going to subtract the 12. We get X equals, and those go away, and get a negative 22. All right, don't let this one trick you guys. Remember what we said before, even in the last sections. If there's ever no number in front of the y or in front of any variable, we can always put a one there, okay? So now we have negative one times y. Remember, they're right next to each other, so that means multiplication. Now, whoops. So the opposite of multiplication means we have to divide. Right, so let's divide that negative one. Cancel out our negative ones. We get y equals 60, a positive 60 divided by a negative one will equal a negative 60. So y equals negative 60. All right, I'm gonna do one more with you guys and then I'm actually gonna have you guys pause the video and try one on your own. All right, so let's go ahead and continue here. Now, on this next one, it can look a little bit tricky because we have a fraction in front of that y but it's okay, we can tackle it one step at a time. First thing you see here is that you have a negative two y divided by three, okay? So that's another way of looking at it. So we can tackle this in two steps instead of just one like we did with the rest of them. So first things first, I wanna get rid of that positive three in the denominator. So what I'm gonna do is, because it's being divided by three, I'm actually going to multiply both sides by three. 
All right, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Now these 3s go away. So what am I left with? I'm left with a negative 2y equals 8 times 3. That's just a 24. All right, now that one step didn't cut it. All right, we have to do one more step in order to solve this problem fully. Now we have that negative 2 times y. All right, so we want to divide y. We want to use, I'm sorry, you divide by a negative 2. We want to use our inverse operations in order to get y by itself. So our final answer here is y equals 24 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 12. All right. So now the next three problems, they might look a little more challenging, but all it is is you guys have to work with decimals. Now, don't be intimidated by these decimals. Just go ahead and try them out. Same thing. Use your inverse operations in order to solve them. Use your calculator if you need to, and then we'll come back and check that you did them correctly. So go ahead and pause the video right now and try these three on your own. All right, guys, let's go ahead and try these uh, 10 through 12 problems. All right, so right away here, I see m minus 3.8. As soon as I said minus, I have to think, what's the inverse operation of a minus? In this case, it would be a plus. So I'm going to add 3.8 to both sides. Remember, we have to do it to both sides. Okay, so what do we get? We get m equals negative 5 plus 3.8. If you go ahead and enter that into your calculator, you should get 2.3. All right, good. So not hard at all. Even though we had decimals, it's still the same concept. We have to keep doing the exact same thing. All right, next one. 8.01 equals W divided by 4.2. So inverse operation of division, multiplication. Okay, remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, okay? I'm actually going to put these in parentheses so it's a little more clear that you're multiplying here, all right? So those 4.2s go away. All you're left with is on the right side is that W. On the left side, we have 4.2 times 8.01. You're going to get 33.64. As your answer. And remember, we wanted it to the nearest hundredth, which is perfect because that is exactly to the nearest hundredth. Okay, two decimal spots. All right, last one we're going to take a quick look at is number 12. So, same concept, guys. Let's just keep it rolling. So, negative 8.3. Remember, what's between the 0.3 and the x? There's a little multiplication symbol there. Okay, so negative 8.3x, I'm sorry, negative 8.3 times x equals negative 37.1425. Again, I said times or multiplication, so the opposite of multiplication is division. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by that negative 8.3. All right, so these two cross out on the left side. All you're left with on the left is your x. Now, negative 37.1425 divided by negative 8.3, you should get 4.475. But remember, on our directions, we wanted it to their nearest hundredth. So this 5 right here makes our hundredth place actually round up. So our final answer is, in fact, 4.48. All right, so that is solving equations, guys. So again, all we're doing is inverse operations. I'm going to scroll back up here for a second. You guys can stay where you're at. But all we're doing is this right here. We're using our inverse operations. Subtraction and addition first, division and multiplication after, then exponents and parentheses. Now, for these few problems, it was pretty clear cut what we had to do first because there was only one operation 
but you guys will start to notice later on there's going to be multiple operations so you're going to have to remember that order and just so we do remember that order I'm actually going to go ahead and write it up here all right so sad map that's what we're going to be using for the remainder of our solving problems all right so this next set of problems says uh, for 13 through 18 solve the following equations round to the nearest hundredth once again so we're going to round to the nearest second decimal all right so there's a few things going on here guys we have the, a multiplication between that 2 and the x and we have a subtraction of a 9 now according to our rules we have to do the inverse operation of one of these first okay and that one is going to be our subtraction okay we have to handle that one first remember sad map subtraction and addition have to go first all right so let's go ahead and tackle that so the inverse operation or the opposite operation of a minus 9 is a plus 9 I'm gonna go ahead and do that now these are gonna go away I'm gonna get 2x equals 7 plus 9 is 16 now I can handle that multiplication okay so I'm gonna go ahead and handle that multiplication by doing the inverse of multiplying by 2 which is dividing by 2 remember don't forget to do it to both sides so I'm dividing by 2 I get x equals 8 for my final answer okay so just remember to keep those steps in um, those steps in order guys subtraction addition division multiplication and exponents and parentheses all right so let's go ahead and keep those in mind as we tackle this next problem so we have w divided by 4 and we have plus 3 equals 15 so we have division and we have addition and just so it's a little more clear what we're doing guys I'm actually gonna write them both on the side so which one do we have to do get rid of first the addition or the division well as we look at our sad map it says addition comes before division so actually I'm gonna have to get rid of this one first and then the division second so let's continue all right so let's get rid of that plus 3 by subtracting 3 I get W over 4 equals 15 minus 3 is just a 12. All right, now I can handle that division by 4. So opposite of dividing by 4 is multiplying by 4. And again, guys, you guys can use that little dot to signify multiplication. Or if you feel more comfortable, go ahead and use parentheses. Same thing, all right? So I'm going to get rid of those 4s. And your final answer is going to be W equals 12 times 4 is just 48. All right. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to do two more with you guys, and then I'm going to have you guys try a few on your own. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at number 15. So, number 15 says negative 8 plus 5 x equals 12 so once again I have this plus here and I have a multiplication there but remember guys there's actually something going on here we're not gonna have to do the opposite of a plus which is a minus we're gonna have to do the opposite of this negative 8 all right so we're either gonna have to do excuse me sorry about that going to have to add first because remember subtraction comes first so we're going to have to add the 8 to both sides we're going to get 5 times x equals 20 now we can get rid of that multiplication opposite of multiplication division so you get x equals 4 or your final answer all right, so again, remember, guys, yes, this did have a plus sign. However, what you're adding is a negative 8, okay? 
that negative is really saying it's subtracting 8. So the opposite of subtraction is this right here, addition. Okay, you have to add the 8 to both sides. Okay, so be careful with that, guys. All right, last one I'm going to do with you guys, number 16, and then you guys are trying a few on your own. So let's see. We have negative 4 times x plus 8 equals negative 8. Again, if it helps you, write them off on the side. You're going to have multiplication, and you're going to have addition. All right, but which one comes first in our sad map sequence? Well, first is addition, then multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those numbers in that order. So first, I'm going to get rid of the addition by subtracting 8. I get negative 4x equals whoops, negative 16. Now I can get rid of my multiplication. I'm going to divide by negative 4. And I get a final answer of x equals 4. All right, guys. So it's up to you guys now to try a few on your own. Now, just be careful with number 17. Remember, if it helps, right on the side, which one you have to do first? Do you have to get rid of that division by 2 or get rid of that subtraction by 6? All right? All right, guys. So go ahead and pause the video for a second and try those out on your own. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a quick look at these two problems. So I have division, and I have subtraction. So which do I have to do first? Well, right away, SADMAP says S, which is subtraction. So I have to do that one first. Then comes division. So let's go ahead and tackle this problem. So instead of subtracting 6 to both sides, I'm going to add 6 because that's my inverse operation. Remember that vocab, guys? So I'm going to cross those out. I'm going to get negative x over 2 equals 3 plus 6 is 9. Now, here you have to be careful. You can do this in two steps or you could do it in one step. You could think of this negative being next to the 2. So let me actually cross this out and I'm going to put it the negative down there so all I really have to do to both sides is multiply by negative 2 okay so I'm going to go ahead and cross these out you get x equals 9 times negative 2 is negative 15 now that didn't quite make sense or you're wondering wait why can you just suddenly move that negative Okay, well, let's go ahead and think of it the other way. I'm going to do it in blue. I had negative x equals, I'm sorry, negative x over 2 equal 9. So I'm going to pretend the negative, actually, let me get rid of that one. I'm going to put it a little closer to the x. I'm going to pretend the negative was still at the top, okay? It was by the x. So let's go ahead and do it. So what is the opposite of dividing by 2? Well, I'm going to multiply. 2. Whoops. Get rid of that. Okay. So multiplying by 2 on both sides cancels that. I have a negative x equals 18. But remember, I don't want a negative x. I want a positive x. So I'm going to have to do another step once more and actually divide by negative 1. So I get x equals negative 18. So if you guys notice, I get the exact same answer. So this is the alternate way of doing it. If you wanted to go ahead and do it all in one step, then I would recommend this method of doing it. Okay? Good. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this final problem, and then we will look at a few review problems from the previous section. So Last one says negative 7 minus 2x equals negative 5. Remember, once again, guys, I have to get rid of this negative 7. So to do that, I have to add 7. 
So I'm going to be doing a little bit of adding, and because this is multiplication here between the 2 and the x, I'm going to be doing a little bit of division. So, but which one comes first? Definitely addition. Let me go ahead and clear that up. So I'm going to add 7. At 7, I get negative 2x equals 2. Now I can divide by negative 2, and I get x equals negative 1. All right. So that one wasn't too hard. Okay. So let's actually go ahead and finish up now. I think you guys are doing pretty good now with your solving equations so just remember for solving equations you have to use sadmap okay inverse operation guys so remember these few key terms if you guys want to write them down here on the side sadmap and inverse whoops inverse operations I'm going to put in parentheses here, opposite operations. All right, guys, so that's the main thing for this section, which if I bring this back up, we have officially reached our objective. We can now solve one-step linear equations using inverse operations, and actually, we did a few here that were either two-step or even multi-step. Okay, but we're going to get a, a little bit more practice with that tomorrow or on the next lesson. But for now, let's go ahead and review uh, some of section 1.2 stuff, which meant uh, which dealt with distributing. Sorry. So let's go ahead and solve these three problems. So it says simplify each expression and write the final answer in standard form. So just so we don't forget how to do this, let's go ahead and practice with these few problems. So right away, I see a parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the 2 to both of those. Now, I didn't do anything with my 8x yet, so I'm going to rewrite it. Okay, now I get 2 times 1, that's just 2, plus 8x. Now, I have to see, before I start writing anything in standard form, is there any like terms? Well, yes, right off the bat, I see those two 8x's. They both have x. Okay, so I'm going to have to add those to get 16x. And finally, I have a constant of 2. Remember, to make sure that you have this in standard form. You have to start adding or combining like terms for the terms that have the higher exponent and move all the way down until you hit your constant. Okay, let's keep going. Same thing. I see parentheses here, so I'm going to distribute. So I get 30n plus 18 minus 9n. So do I have any like terms? Well, yes, I do. I have like terms here and here. I can add those. So, or I'm sorry, actually subtract those, which is 30n minus 9n. That's just a 21n. And finally, that plus 18 stays all by itself. I cannot find it with anything else. So not only have I simplified, but I've also written in standard form. All right, guys, just to make sure that you guys are understanding this perfectly, I want you guys to pause the video right now and try this last problem for me, and then we'll come back to check our answer. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at this last problem to finish up for today. So right away, I see that parentheses, so I'm going to distribute. I get 8 plus 7 times negative 10m is actually a negative 70m, so I'm actually going to change this to a minus 70m. And 7 times negative 1 is a negative 7. Once again, do I have like terms? Yes, I do. The 8 and the negative 7 can definitely combine, so I get 1 minus... 70m and that is it all right now actually i just noticed something 
Did I write that in standard form, guys? No, I didn't, right? So actually, that is not our final answer, so I'm going to get rid of that. I have to have this term first, okay? So in order to have this in actual standard form, I have to write it as negative 70m plus 1. Remember, this is a positive 1 in the front, okay? So negative 70m plus 1 is your final answer. All right, now I have caught that error, and we can go ahead and proceed from there. So this answer is correct, not that one. All right, guys, so go ahead and continue on with the next section, which is section 1.4. All right, make sure you rewatch the video if, you, if there's something here that you still don't understand, and I will see you guys next time.